I'm Jonathan Monson. I'm Trevor Monson's son. He's the beekeeper coordinator for all the almond farms. At the moment we're standing um, next to a, a load that we just unloaded this morning. Um, it's about 150 hives here. T- tell us what they actually look like because they're not what I would have pictured when you when you say a hive of bees. No, they're all in uh, wooden boxes, uh, painted so the weather doesn't deteriorate them, but um, most of them are all two boxes high. So you have the, the brood in the bottom box and then usually honey in the top box. And we've got, what, about 150-odd boxes here. How big is that in comparison to how many are going to come in in total? Uh, we've got a total this year of 72,000 hives coming, so it's not very much. <laughs> And the bees are they've only so they've only been here since this morning. They they seem to be swarming around a bit, but they're already making their way out to the some of the, some of the trees. Only a few of which have started to flower so far. Well, they'll they'll usually get up uh, around eight o'clock in the morning, um, depending on how cold it is and how sunny it is. And do they know instinctively to head for the flowers? Yeah, it's just natural instinct for them. Yeah, they'll just go to the the closest flower. Um, once that's pollinated, they'll keep heading out further. Where do they come from, the hives? These ones we're just looking at today uh, have only come from about 150 k's away. Um, the furthest ones are coming from Queensland. Another one coming this morning from Batemans Bay. Do they normally come in from that far away? Not usually. Um, it's only in the last few years that we've needed the numbers, um, so we're getting them from further away. Um, the beekeepers decide that, that it's worth bringing them from that far. Because there had been some concern that time was running out to actually get the, the bees in soon enough. Is that something that's concerning you or is there enough time? Um, now that we've got the go-ahead there is enough time. Um, the beekeepers have uh, been planning for this all year so they were um, kind of ready. And almond trees do need to be cross-pollinated don't they to actually grow a crop? Yeah without the pollination they get nothing. If you're, if you're a beekeeper do you have to decide oh well this for, for now I'm going to go for honey production or I'm going to pollinate? Can you do both? You can do both, but to have the quality of bees this time of year, you do need to sacrifice a honey crop maybe back in April. So we're talking about over a billion and a half bees, mm-hmm. which is sounds pretty ridiculous to me. Does the scale of it still amaze you, or are you just used to it by now? No, it's only grown this big in the last few years, so I'm only just getting used to it as well, but um, it is a lot of bees. When you start to drive around these farms, there is a lot of almonds here. And unfortunately, I, I figure we should probably go because I've already got one bee caught in my hair, which is growing ridiculously long at the moment. And, um, I, get, I figure I get to ask one free dumb question. How many times do you get stung by bees? It depends on who owns them, I think. <laughs> uh, these ones we stand next to today aren't too bad, but um, there is beekeepers that you wouldn't be within a couple of hundred metres of. <laughs> so you drop them and run? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, Rob Kilpatrick from Joel, near Stoll, Victoria. And Rob, you're a, an apiarist? Yep, that's right. Um, I just came up to meet uh, Trevor Monson today because um, we've been we've shifted farms from where we usually go, and uh, just came up to get the general directions and where to put the bees down. So, how many will you be bringing up to pollinate the almonds this year? Uh, I'll be bringing about 460, 470 hives this year into this block. Is it more straightforward for you to to bring them up to pollinate, or would you prefer to go for honey production? Um, at, well, I've always looked at it. In August, you can't make this sort of income off the bees anywhere else and pollination sort of sets your year up it's um it it really does the bees really good and you can't get that pollen anywhere else in august is there some uncertainty i mean given the the collapse of of timber corp does that threaten where you might be able to send your bees in a few years time is that on your radar do you worry about that me and a mate discussed this um, when timber corp first fell over when i first started beekeeping i wasn't involved in the almond industry and we beekeeped for quite a few years and we just looked at it if it fell over we'll have to deal with it and that's all we can do with it. You can't. We just took the year on as look. If, if armour pollination comes up, that's all good and well. If it doesn't, you just got to get on with the job. So there's a, there'd be enough uh, to keep you busy if it, if that wasn't around. I've got a, a farm as well, mate, so I can always keep busy. 